In this video, we're going to take a look at average rates of returns for investments. And if you have investments, why the average rates of returns quoted on those financial documents may be a little misleading and most likely probably inflated. So first of all, there's a couple different ways we can calculate this. What is typically reported by financial firms is what's called the average annual return. Sometimes they give you a three, five, or ten year average rate of return for that investment. The, the best way really to compare investments or to see what it's actually doing as an investment is what's called the compounded annual growth rate. That's typically what they do not report though. So let's go through some examples here. Let's say we start with a $10,000 investment and in the first year uh, that goes up 20%. So at the end of that year you'd have $12,000. In year two you're starting with $12,000 and let's say the investment goes up 10%. So now it's worth $13,200. In year three we start with $13,200 and let's say in that particular year the market goes down and it drops 15%. Now it's only worth $11,220. In the following year, slightly kind of a poor year, it drops 5%. So now it's down to $10,659. And then in year five, we start with $10,659. It goes up 20% and it finishes after five years at $12,790.80. Now, what is typically reported is what's called the average rate of return, which is just a simple average of these values. Or in other words, you take 20 plus 10 minus 15 minus 5 plus 20, these values right here, and then of course add them up and divide by 5. That's the simple average. What we might think of as arithmetic mean. That's what you'll see re reported on your investments. However, the true compounded annual growth rate is only 5.046%. So what's the difference? Well, really quite a bit because in a long-term investment, $10,000, if it would have been growing at a 6% compounded, okay, it would have been worth $102,859.18 over 40 years. So that $10,000 at 6% compounded would have grown into almost $103,000. However, if it was growing at 5.046%, that $10,000 over the same 40 years would only grow into $71,644.16. Notice that's quite a bit of difference. $31,000 difference roughly because of a one percentage point difference. Okay, so what financial firms typically are reporting is the average rate of return which is usually always a bit inflated. Now let's take a look at one other example. Let's say in year one a $10,000 investment grew 10 percent. Now it's worth 11,000. Year two it dropped 15 percent. The stock market if this is stocks is always a bit volatile. So now you're down to 93.50. Uh, in year three, it drops 5%. Year four, it goes up 20%. Year five, it goes up 15%. See? So again, a five-year average rate return in this case is 5%. The compounded annual growth rate, though, is 4.15%. The reason that this happens is because, let's say, in year one, the market goes down 20% and in year two it goes up 20%. Well, if it went down 20% and up 20%, the average rate of return would be zero. However, you've lost money because if something goes down 20%, it's gotta go up 25% to break even. Okay, so <clears throat> the average rate of return, that's what they like to use because it's usually a little inflated. If we look at the S&P 500, okay, basically just a basket of typically the largest 500 companies in the United States, the average rate of return over this 40-year period 
was 12.88%, but that's the average. That's not what we should use when comparing investments. The compounded annual growth rate was 11.56% for the S&P 500. That's, of course, with dividends that the company pays. Now, another misconception about rates of returns when we're looking at averages. This is another thing that people do that, again, distorts the true facts. So let's say an, a an asset purchased in 1990 for 20000 and sold in 2020 for 50000 that's 30 years. Notice the percent increase. If we calculated the percent increase, you take the difference of those two numbers and divide by the original amount, this had a 150% increase. If we divide that by 30 years, we might assume that it earned 5% per year, but that wouldn't have been compounded. That's what's called simple interest. Okay, so that would be the incorrect way to look at this investment. It's not really earning 5% every year on a compounded basis. It's earning that. That was a simple interest calculation, but that's not how investments should be calculated. The compounded annual growth rate of this exact same investment is only 3.1%, quite a bit different. If it would have been growing at a 5% compounded rate, it would have been worth $86,438.85 rather than $50,000. A huge difference, okay? So this is not a way we should calculate rates of return. Now, how is the compounded annual growth rate calculated? Okay, I'm gonna let EB equal the ending balance of any asset or investment. We'll let BB be in the beginning balance of any asset or investment. And N is just how many years it was invested. So you take the ending balance divided by the beginning balance and then you take that to the power of 1 over n, where n is how many years, and then you subtract 1 from it. This will give you what was called the, again, the compounded annual growth rate. So regardless of what kind of volatility happens in that time period, this basically gives you an idea of what it was earning if it would have been a nice smooth curve, and what it would have been earning if it would have been compounded per year as an investment. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say a, an asset was purchased in 2000 for $30,000. It was sold in 2015 for $70,000. To calculate our compounded annual growth rate, we take 70,000 divided by 30,000 to the power of one divided by 15 minus one that's basically 5.811%. Notice the percent increase here though. It actually increased 133%. If we would have divided by 133% by 15 years, we might think that we earned 8.89%. That would have been simple interest and that is not how an investment should be calculated. Okay, so the only way we can fairly compare investments and determine which one is better than the other is look at a compounded annual growth rate. Okay. Again, if you look at your financial documents, you're not going to see that typically. You're going to see an average rate of return because that is always a little inflated. It makes their products look a little better. So anyway, uh, in the next video, we'll take a look at um, how do we compare investments? We'll also dive into this a little bit more and determine how we find the compounded annual growth rate if there are dividends, if there's stock splits, uh, various other things. So we'll get into detail a little bit more in a, in a future video.